to the Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV, Tipperary Camogie's official YouTube channel. I'm Journey Canan. I'm delighted for this week's episode to be joined by Turda Sarsu, Tisha McCormick and Cuiva Matter from Birds to Hara. Ladies, you're both very welcome to the show. Thanks, Journey. Um, we have a jam-packed weekend coming up of adult um, FBD insurance, championship games, semi-finals and... Um, I suppose the big one really is the two senior semi-finals and uh, we're going to preview that now. Um, I suppose Katie and Cueva, you both would prefer to be preparing for the semi-finals, but it wasn't to be for third of Sarsfields or Birds to Harry this year. Um, both teams knocked out at quarter-final stages, but I suppose the both of you are in a, a brilliant position to preview the games. Uh, Katie, third of Sarsfields played Anna Karshi, Clonty and Drum in the group stages and met Cash in the quarterfinal while um, Cuiva's team, Birds to Hara, played Cash in the group stages and uh, met Clonty Rossmore in the quarterfinal. So I suppose looking ahead to these two semi finals, Anna Carty and Clonty, Drum Lynch and Cash. Um, for me, I suppose outside looking in, it's been a really competitive championship this year. Um, all four teams left, in my opinion, could could easily go on and win a county final in a couple of weeks' time. Um, would you agree with that, Cuiva, or? What, how do you feel about the four teams left in it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I think it is, as, as you said, it, anything could happen, to be honest, next weekend. I think over the results that we've seen in the last couple of weeks, there's probably been a few surprise results as well as some that people would have thought were coming. Uh, but definitely a lot of like hard, hard battles. And I think teams would have lot, will have learned a lot from those kind of hard battles. I think especially in the in the other group as well, there's been some really, really hard hard battles. And, you know, a lot of those teams will be very familiar with each other. So it'll be the second or third time that they'll be coming across each other this year. And um, so, I mean, all I think is, is is that it's exciting and it'll be two very, very good games, I think, next weekend, hopefully. And Katie, I suppose the same to you. Um, c- could you see either of these four teams uh, winning the county final in a couple of weeks' time? Um, yeah, based on form of what happened in the group games and um, even the quarterfinals, sure, when you're in the final four, you're in a right chance. Like, obviously, you can't but ignore that Drum have won the last two and um, they've probably scored the most in the championship. Um, you know, they're going to be a front runner based on what they've done in the last two years. So, you can't but but like Danny Carty have just created shock after shock I suppose you could say this year and um, I say Clonty likes to think they have a big game in them yet and Cashel are a young and fit team like so it, anyone if I was them like you couldn't help but believe no matter what team you were on that you have a chance of winning the county final this year I suppose that's what makes the semi-finals very exciting uh, coming up on Saturday um, to you Cueva then um, you played Clonty in the semi-final last year and and in the quarterfinal this year, they're up against Anna Carty. Um, did you do you think Clonty have got stronger this year from from last year to this year? Do you see an improvement? And if so, how how so, or where are they where have they improved? I I definitely think that Clonty have probably learned a lot. I'd say in the last in the last two years, I think if you if you look at their team as well, like for them, it's kind of difficult to say. Um, based on the the players or the personnel that they've kind of had to switch in and out due to injuries and, and things like that. Um, but I, I think what what they've improved on a lot in the last two years and in the last two games that we would have played them in, which were both knockout stages of the championship, they don't panic anymore. You know, they're well used to being there in the last stages of the championship and they kind of trust themselves that that's where they definitely belong. Um, so if anything, I would say it's a, it's a different mind shift um, uh, for them and they and as I said they have that confidence that they belong in the in the ends of the championship now and you know they they absolutely are still within every every ounce of a shout going out next weekend I'd say that's a very good point actually the whole mm-hmm. mindset of it um, yeah. comes with experience as well uh, Katie you bet Anna Carty in the first uh, round of the championship the only team uh, to beat Anna Carty this year um, I know you saw them a few weeks later I suppose against Clonty did you notice a, a change or improvement even in that short time or the way they lined out or approached the game? Yeah, because I'd actually we played um we played in Bet Anacarty in the first round and then we lost to uh, Clonalty in the second round. And then it was the third round we had a bye, so I went to see them. And it was so interesting seeing both teams 
Um, it's fair to say it was a completely different end of the cars team that we played. I don't know if we caught them on the hop or they thought they were going to have an easy first round against intermediate county champions or what, but their mindset completely changed. And I heard kind of murmurings going in along as I was walking in along to the field that Clonolty nearly gets spooked by Anna Carthy, like that they, 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 they don't like going up, traveling up there. It just felt like everything was going in Anna Carthy's favor and from the throw and the momentum they brought was on a different level. And it just felt like Clonolty never got going. They were, you know, it just, it just felt like Anna Carthy had even mentally kind of wore them that day. And, they didn't allow the girls to hurl. They didn't allow the Clonty girls to hurl. Like, I think caught the van, did most for scoring from freeze. Emer Burke didn't get get the ball into her in the full forward line. Like, they were just struggling on that day. And I think they'll want to fight back. They want to make a point. You know, at the end of the day, there are the two West clubs in Tip Camogie and O'Cashel as well. But like, the three of them, they're all trying to make their point that they're the best in the West, really. And um, it'll be a really interesting match because I feel like Clonty will really want to show up after the last day. And, and a are making a point like they went to the bet drum, they went to the bet everyone except for our stars, but um that means nothing now because we're gone. But you know, they they're really a team on the up and um, you know, Siobhan O'Neill, these women, they want to win a county final. They're like, you know, and I can they're the of the older girls, the more mature players, and you know, I I feel that like the momentum is behind Anna Carty and like as a neutral now um in the championship, you'd be kind of really fancy them, you'd like to see them win it. Yeah, I suppose, you know, they've had loads of underage success. Um, like so Rosanna Donald, Eilish McDonald have all grown up winning titles underage. And, you know, for me, they're knocking on the door, really, the senior championship for a long time. But this year is the year, I suppose, to be really, you know, taking big scalps, like beating drum and inch, um, you know, in the group stages. And they just seem to be coming right at, you know, like you said, great momentum with them. Um, I suppose Clonty is probably a bit different. You know, they, they had the knockback. Uh, you know, losing to Anacarty and losing to Drummond Inch and um, but then the massive score they put up against Tumivara and then obviously beating Birds to Harrow was huge as well. So it's just going to be a really hard game to call. Um where do you think Quiva this game could be won or lost or I'd say well I mean if you I haven't seen Anna Carty play play this year, um to be honest, but you know from 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 what from the results that they've had up to date, it does look like they are absolutely on an upward spiral. Um, and it looks like what happened in the in the first round could have been the best thing that ever happened to them, to be honest, this year. Um, and they'll be building on that and building on that. And they'll feel like they've they've a point to prove now and that they've got their act together. But if you are on that team going out at the weekend, I mean, you, you know, everybody knows you ha- you have to stop caught anyway. Um you know, first and foremost, you know, she is one of the best free takers in the country, one of the best forwards in the country. Um, so you, you have to be aware of that. And I don't know what way they're going to do that, whether they're going to pinpoint someone to to go after her, or whether they're comfortable enough that they're going to be able to hand it off and, and split it up between a number of different people. But you, everyone knows that that's something that you're going to have to address and it's something they'll have to address themselves this week when they're preparing. Um, after that as well, then, like, again, if you're if you're going out to be to, to beat Clonoda, you have to be aware of like they've they've two very strong people down the middle in in, in Courtney and in, in Core Hennessy as well. So any ball that you're pumping into your full forwards or or half forwards, it will it will have to be out of their radar. So you'll have to be conscious of that. Um, and especially if 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 one of those is, is playing a sweeper, you have to be you have to be smart about what you're doing. I think on the on the flip side then as well, if if you know, if you're Clonolty and you've already lost to Anna Carty and you want to go out and, and win the next day, I think first and foremost, what you're trying to convince yourself this week is you have to go out with an absolutely manic aggression, I'd say, in the first like 10 minutes, almost as if you could if you could surprise them. Um, and, and if you could if you could keep it at a battle then from from the 10 minutes um, onwards and then play smart, you know, if those forwards are aware that they can take those backs on and they can win their, their freeze and they just hold up the ball. Caught will be putting putting stuff like that over the bar all day if there's a high free count. So it'll definitely, definitely be interesting. But I'd say from from their point of view, if they can really take on those first 10 minutes and 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 not let Anna Carty get away from them at all, it'll be a huge battle after that. Because what, what you're saying there, Quiva, about um Courtney Ryan playing the sweeper role, like mm. the against and um, Carty the last day, and the Carty just eliminated that. They were just placing that ball behind her every time. And then they had Eilish McDonald in the for, full forward line. And that's where all the damage was done. And that manic 
um, attack that you're talking about, mm-hmm. the Clonalty ring, that's what Anna Carter did to Clonalty the last day, and it was so intense. The first 10 minutes, I think there was two goals scored within six minutes. It was just, they, they did those two things that you were saying, you know, it was actually so the, interesting. The others will have to do, yeah. yeah. So there you go, it'll be a case of, of almost kind of trying to swap to, to swap roles, learn from what Anna Carty did to them last time and, and, and try to replicate that then on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I think against Rome, Eileen McDonald caused a lot of trouble as well. She was named a full forward, but roamed around everywhere and, mm. you know, caused all kinds of sorts of trouble for uh, drum and inch and um, just just following up on that Katie then so who where do you think the key battles and the matchups will be uh, between Anna Carty and Clonanti? Um, uh, well I think an interesting one will be Rosanna O'Donnell full back um, I imagine Emer Burke or Casey Hennessy will be around there and you know you have a, a very strong full back long strike in her and a really confident young player and then you have two very fast forwards but um, I think that'll be interesting to see how Rosanna deals with them inside in the full forward line uh, sure Courtney then will be on Siobhan Neal and I think like there you've got two like players with extreme presence like so that's going to be a real battle and then um, it'll be interesting to see how Cora Hennessy and who um, Anna Carty put in her because like you know Cora is playing years I remember she played in 2006 All-Ireland final tip like you know she's bringing um, such experience with her. It'll be interesting to see who Anna Carty think will step up to that. And then, like, just to see where Jean Kelly's going to play. Like, you don't know, Anna Carty has so many players and so much ability. As you can know, it'll be interesting to see who takes up co- uh, caught. Um, you can't really predict her. We're great if we the team should be here and we were to yeah. say, like, <laughs> maybe we'll get one for the next day. What do you think, Jordan? But, um, yeah. yeah, it'll be just interesting yeah. to see, I suppose, where girls play. And they'll want to surprise each other as well, you know. You'll be it'd be interesting to see. Very good. Uh, so that's uh, Anna Carty first Clonty in Dundrum at half three on Saturday, October the 30th. The other semi-final then, it's the meeting of Drum and Inch and Cashel. It's a repeat of last year's semi-final. Um, so looking ahead to that one, Quiva, uh, you played Cashel last year and I suppose in the group stages, I know uh, you bet them. This year then, first round, uh, they bet you. Um, ha- have they improved from last year? How have they improved? Um, I, I would say I definitely. Um, in terms of, of, of what was different or what we perceived to be different this year, I not to be repeating myself now, but I think that Kasha did come with that absolutely manic aggression the day that we played them. Um, you know, they, the physicality that they brought to the match, as well as the movement that they brought to, to the game, very difficult as a defender, I guess, to, to try and deal with. So, in terms of what what they've improved on or what what I would have noticed that was different is their their forwards aren't afraid to to take on the responsibility to do the movement that that will confuse um any back essentially who's who's out there you know they're they're pulling right out the field they're attacking that in twos and threes constantly swapping left and right you know it doesn't matter where you're necessarily playing and just trying to to I guess keep everyone else on on their toes so I think that was that was definitely something that that we would have noticed as 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 quite a strength for for Cashel, and I think it's something that they'll try to to replicate. I can, I, I guess against Drum as well, knowing the the strength of the half back line that they're going out to to um to to play against. And I think as well in in terms of um improvements, they've had a lot of younger players I think come up who are very confident at 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 what they're doing. You know, not afraid to take on their players, not afraid to take their scores. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that's. That's mostly what, what I feel they've improved on the last 12 months. Okay, and Casey then, I suppose, Turtis Arsis played drum and inch uh, in the final group game. And then a week later, um, he played Cashel in the quarter final. I know probably two totally different performances by Turtis Arsis, but how would you compare or contrast both drum and Cashel? Are they, you know, are there similarities or their style of play or? Would you t- see him as totally two different teams? or? Um, uh, I mean this in the kindest way to both teams, but I'd say they're exact opposites, really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, both have skill, both have loads of ability, loads are capable of winning, but um, Drum are an older team. I'd say statistically, if you were to look at that now, by, like by birth dates of birth, they're an older team in general. Um, full of experience, 
I'd say if you were to count up how many county finals, how many, everything there, you'd be, you'd be run out of numbers. Um, you know, loads of experience, loads of ability, the way they place the ball to each other, looking up, not panicking, um, stylish hurlers. Uh, then Cashel are fast and furious and full of life and skillful and brave, as Quivo was saying, and they're not afraid to take on anyone. Um, they are they're put their heads in where they shouldn't put hurlies. Like, it's just, they bring an intensity to it. And they're, it's very free-flowing game and, they don't like again caught up in rocks. They don't want that. They want the ball moving all the time. I feel like drummer, drum nearly like the ball to slow down a bit, uh, reset, go again. Jordan, you're smiling at me now. I hope you don't mind me. Saying that. No, no, I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> and and drum are physically very strong women, and I'd say um, Cashel are strong and hard. That's what I'd say. Yeah. And now I'm in goals, so I didn't really get that many push or shoves written, but, you know, <laughs> just from where I was standing anyway, it seemed like, you know, I, I wouldn't like to go in for a, a shoulder at Maria Deveston or anything, but, um, yeah, no, uh, it's, it, they're two very different teams, loads of ability of both and loads of skill and different types of experience. So that yeah. casual team of loads of experience, minor, underage, county teams, then drum kind of elder states people you know but they there's a tradition in drum as well a tradition of winning and it's and it's a it's always ongoing um unfortunately now we were at the worst end of both of those results but i'll be seeing them in my nightmares over the christmas <laughs> yes was that what what makes the semi-final really intriguing it is literally a team going for three in a row and you know obviously beaten and Lots of county finals before that by Duke Birds Dohara, who had a famous seven in a row. But then you have Cash, who really are the new kids on the block. And, you know, knowing that Drum and Inch team, they actually probably, bar playing Cash last year in a semi final, they wouldn't have really met. You know, I would say a lot of the Drum team would struggle to name some of the Cash players. And vice versa, the Cash players wouldn't know the Drum players, even, you know, the main Drum players or the main Cash players, because they wouldn't have met. They wouldn't have met at underage. They wouldn't be, you know, the casual girls would be used to playing minor, you know, girls and minors. And the last few years, a lot of them are still minor, like Sir Grace Maloney. And um, I just think it's going to be intriguing battle. And I suppose that's where I was wondering, Quiva, you would know from your experience winning multiple county titles, like drum, you know, is it a thin line, I suppose, between, you know, having the confidence and the experience of winning county finals, but then... Is there a risk of being complacent and maybe like the cash will be more hungrier than drum uh, on Saturday? Um, well, I, I think when you're when you're winning and when you make it a habit, which or, or when you make it a pattern, which it seems to kind of have to, to, which it has been almost for the last two years and, and going into three now with with drum, it, like you, you, I would I would definitely view that as being a a complete um advantage to be honest you know you're used to winning you know what it takes to make it happen and then all you have to do is essentially replicate it and more every every time i think on the on the back end of of that though you will obviously like all you have is a target on your back all the time then it makes every team in the in the county want to to come against you and have their chance to 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 win and i think that's actually something um that's an advantage to cash in this is that they haven't played drum that many times you know they 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 may not have been uh, have been in many games against drum where they've lost before whereas some of the other teams in the competition would have that pattern where they've gone out to play them and they've and they've lost against them so it can you know it you can you can look at it from both sides but if i was looking at it from a drum and inch point of view i would definitely definitely be thinking it's an it's an advantage you know when when the game is in the melting pot like and there's there's 10 minutes left and you know the the team are coming close to you but if you've been on a team where you've won with those people before you know you're looking at the girls around you and you trust that they know what they're doing to get you over the line at the end of the day so i i would i would definitely view it as as an advantage um, but again, as as we said, I it's funny because I don't think that Cash will have that that history of being beaten by them, uh, so it could it, it could also work out for them. Yeah, very true. Um, I just think it's going to be a cracker. Do you know, it was the close semi final yeah. last year, and I expect obviously Cash will have improved since then. Um, Drum, I suppose, had the experience of winning, and I think they're coming good at at, at the right time too. The last two games is definitely an improvement, but. How much more they can improve, I suppose, is the question. 
Um, so, Casey, where do you think this game will be won or lost? Or um, I think that the Cashel, Cashel obviously did very well in the quarterfinal, but they hit a lot of wides, and I th- I don't want that. I think that will come against them. Um, you know, I think that could be their downfall and just steady in the head and, and not rushing it really. Um, but they've great fl- players, like we're saying, Grace Maloney there, wing forward, was absolutely dominant um, last week against us. Um, but they just need to settle themselves a bit. I think they're probably at an advantage, you know, being really honest, I think, like, as a Turles person growing up, we knew every drum and inch player because they probably went to school with them or whatever. Like we were saying, Cashel probably don't know those girls. Maybe they know a few of them from hip, but they don't know the ins and outs of them. And as I goes going in against Anna Carty, when you don't know anything about them, you don't want to know anything about them. You just want to win the match. That's an advantage. I think that's an advantage to Cashel. They'll go in there. They're the young kids on the block. No one knows anything about them. You know, they're just going to go for it. Um, and, and they have that, that mindset, I'd say, about them. Um, and you know what? They have a pattern of winning as well. Like They won an intermediate county final. They've won a junior a couple of years before. You know, their minors are winning. It's They might not be winning senior county finals in the pattern, but I'd say just yet. I'd say it's on the way for them, whether it's this year or coming. Um, but, you know, drummer are going to be looking to Miriam Campion, um, D. Dunn, Joanne Ryan, Michelle, like Liam Nathie's players, Michelle Woodlock, like just such stylish forwards. Like they'd actually, standing the goals, looking out of them, you'd be shaking in your boots, you know, that kind of way. Like they're just phenomenal and, I think that the Cashel backs will be looking specifically, I suppose, to Sarah Ryan standing up and, um, you know, she's very vocal on the field and they'll be wanting her to out hurl them all and creating a wall there in front of Aoife O'Brien. Very good. Um, Quiva then, I suppose, what are the key battles do you think? Uh, what will be the key battles on Saturday Bye. between Drummond and Cashel? I mean, I definitely think the key battle um, is is going to be really interesting between that drum half back line and that Cashel um, half forward line. To to be honest, like you look at you 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 have through stalwarts like in in Eve McGrath, Ray Everson going out there on onto that field, and then you have the the girls who would have who would have done the damage against us the day we played them as well. The likes of Corinne, Nicole Shelley, and, and Grace as well. You know the movement that there that they bring to it, the speed that they bring to it. Um, you know, how, how will the girls in, 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 in the drum and inch half back line deal with that? Will they be passing people off? Uh, will they be going with their players? It's going to be, it's going to be really, really interesting. And I think um, it's, it's going to be, it's almost going to be a battle of minds, I'd say. Will, will the kind of smartness that the, the drum half back line will have in, in slowing things down and staying in, in covering the space, will that out kind of outsmart the legs of, of, of the casual forwards or will the, or will the legs outsmart the, the, the brains it's it's going to be interesting definitely I would say a great way of putting it okay so I'm going to put you on the line now and get your prediction so Anna Carty and Clonanti you first you Katie who who's going to win it Anna Carty Quiva Quiva this is kind of difficult because I, I haven't seen Anna Carty playing this year but you're bigging them up here big time on <laughs> on this so it's oh, it's, no, I... it's <laughs> It's difficult to say. I mean, um, God, I don't know. I'll, I'll go, I'll go with Clonanti. Sure, having, having played them and having known them, I'm sure we'll see what happens. Very good. And then Drummond Inch and Cashel. So we will start with you, Queefe, this time. Who, who's going to win that one? I'm going to give it to Drum. I think they'll have, they'll have it in the bag. They'll need, they'll have it in the bag. And Casey. Yeah, I said Drum will come out on top again. Mm. No, lads, you're after giving cash loads of ammunition to people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very good. So that is the predictions of Katie and Quiva. Thanks a million, girls. And like you said, two really good uh, semi-finals to look forward to. And then definitely whoever gets through the two of them, it's going to be a cracking final. And uh, it's going to be the, a very hard Erin County title uh, down the line for either of those four teams. Um, I suppose on Saturday as well, we also have the intermediate semi-finals. Shannon Rovers against Bursley. That's at 12 noon in County Camogie Grounds in the Reg. And Naka Villa, Dunnesky, Kickhams and Killer One at 3 p.m. in the Camogie Grounds in the Reg. Um, just a quick look at them. I suppose Katie Naka Villa, um, you know, that was a, a group of six teams. They came first in the group. Killer One came fourth. So I 
suppose Naka Villa will be favourites for that one. Yeah, I think Naka Villa are kind of falling into that pattern that's been happening the couple of year, last couple of years. You know, winning the junior A, coming up, getting out of the intermediate, um, or getting into the intermediate county final fairly quickly. It looks like they're going to do the same thing. Um, they look like hot favourites. Yeah, it's nice for players, again, like Beth Ryan, you know, that are, that are on the um, older side of, I suppose, Camogie mm-hmm. players. You know, they're getting their, their chances um, to get to that big stage. It's what we all, all want. Um, and I think that uh, Laca Villa, we played them in a challenge match last year, actually. And, you know, they have Emer Heffern and they have Arena Friday. Like, they're, they're a really, really class team. Like, they're really stylish hurlers, loads of ability. And I think Kilron, maybe two years ago, probably should have got to a county final, um, you know, intermediate. They, they had a real firepower. And I think to, losing two semifinals in a row is, is really after knocking them. Um, and, you know, they're a team with loads of ability and they just don't seem to be getting into that, that you know, the, the top tier where they could get. Um, but you know what? I think maybe maybe this weekend will be the weekend where it all works out for them and they'll get into that kind of final spot they're, they're looking so hard for, for the last number of years. And just in the other semi final, then Shannon Rovers and Boris Lee, obviously Shannon Rovers were beaten in the intermediate final last year by Third and Sarsfield. So, would have been many people's favourites this year. Um, they bet Boris Lee in the group stages earlier in the year. I know Boris were missing a few uh, that day, and you know, I would expect a close semi final there. But I think news just during the week was that Nicole Walsh is out with a broken thumb. So, Quiva, you would have played with Nicole and against her, obviously. I mean, she's going to be a huge loss for Boris Lee. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, they we all know the caliber of player that, that Nicole is, and if you know, there, there's no two ways about it. Bursley are going to are going to be missing her from like an open play point of view. One of the smartest people that there is out there on the field, and as well on on frees and 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 um and and free balls and things like that. So, it's yeah, it's it's definitely a loss for them. But then again, like Shannon Rovers were were there and thereabouts last year and didn't win. Could that be? A, could that be to their favour? Could that be to their detriment? Will they be almost too excited to, to try and get there again? Um, and Bursley have been have been going pretty well. I know that they they did they, they did lose in the in the in the group stage um, earlier on. But again, if 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 anything, all that is is more uh, more fuel in the tank or more fire in the tank to try and come at, come out and, and and win this time. So definitely, definitely a good battle and interesting, I'd say. Yeah, so that's the four semi-finals there on Saturday. Shannon Rovers and Boris Lee at 12 and Naka Villa Kickhams and Killer One at 3 o'clock. Um, just a quick rundown through the other um, uh, matches now. We don't have time to go through them all, but um, on Sunday, the, it's semi-final stage in the Junior B competition too. So McCarkey, Boris and Portrow. Um, I know they met in the group stages and I think McCarkey had a three-point win over Portrow. Portrow bet Carrie Swans in the quarter-final last weekend, but I suppose McCarkey are many people's favourites for this competition, having won the league um, and never won so far. In the other semi final, it's Gurton Hu and Laura. So both those games are in Sean Tracy's J Pitch and Kilcommon. Um, McCarkey versus and Portro at 11 a.m. and Gurton Hu and Laura at 2 p.m. Again, uh, Laura lost out in the Junior B county final last year to Templemore. Um, I suppose Claude McIntyre would be their main forward. So that game could be quite close, but um, I think Gordon Hill would be many people's favourites too after reaching the league final this year. But again, um, expecting two good semi finals there. And then in the FBD Junior B2 Championship semi finals, we have Cashel and Tumivara at 11 a.m. and Clonty and Silvermines at 2 p.m. And both those games are in drum band. And just the last few fixtures then the FBD Insurance Junior B2 Shield final is on Sunday, 31st, in the Camogie Grounds. And that's at 11 o'clock, Anna Carty and Shannon Rovers. And then FBD Insurance Intermediate Play Finals is at 2 o'clock, and that's Newport and Care. I suppose the two of the six intermediate teams that didn't get through to, this, to the semifinals, uh, Newport and Care are playing an intermediate play final. So lots to play for there still. And there's two rounds of the Junior A Championship as well this, this weekend. Um, Drum and Inch and Feathered and Templemore and Holy Cross, just the final two group games in that group in the Junior A Championship and then we'll, ha- we'll know the appearance for the knockout stages so loads of matches to look forward to again this weekend I suppose the big one is the is the senior semi-finals that we previewed in depth here and um, we're really looking forward to all the games so 
I suppose we recorded this early in the week, so be sure to just, uh, keep an eye on temporarycomogi.com website and social media just for any changes in fixtures and for all the latest updates. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks to Queen and Katie for coming on. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.